Okay, um, so I'm gonna, I have takeaways. I basically just was jotting down takeaways as I was watching the game. This is my first video recording. I'm gonna do the intro after I do the second half, so it's gonna be a very mismatch, but it might be a little bit of an odd segment. We'll see. Um, I'll just cover stats real quick. We're gonna try to get this down under 10 minutes because I gotta put this with the second half, which will definitely be longer, I'm sure. Um, Miami 33, Auburn 32. Uh, I thought there could have been something there towards the end with a uh, Walker Kessler going to the, the rim, but um, it looks like they didn't really run us, as they put it, across screen, the commentators, but they didn't really run any action to get Kessler going to the rim. They just kind of used a decoy, which I thought would be a possibility. Um, if you were an opposite coach and you saw the out of time out plays uh, featuring Kessler, like him on the court, usually they involve him being on there. Um, and not today, so, you know, it is what it is. But um, so they didn't feature Kessler very much on, on, on that. He got in foul trouble too, so of course that didn't help. But um, so field goal, field goals uh, percentage: forty-one point two percent for Miami, thirty point seven percent Auburn. Uh, one is seven for Miami, which if you were looking at how that game started, you would have thought maybe that'd go a little bit differently. Uh, two of ten from Auburn. Uh, some really poor shot attempts by uh, Jabari. Four of four from free throw uh, for Miami. Six of seven for Auburn. That's I think for the people who blame us on officiating. I think it's a little bit slanted in some of the touch fouls, but the Officiating is allowing our centers to stay alive because there's a lot of what you would call hand checking uh, with our centers laying their hands basically on opposing guards uh, to keep up with them. It's a lot of bodying going on all uh, involved, and uh, that's really allowing our fives to stay in the game right now. So I'm not really blaming officiating for anything that's happened here. Uh, we're up by six and rebounds, 23 to 17. Um, let's see, assists, we're up by two, which. It's kind of crazy, but, I mean, if you compare the back half of that game, or that half to the second half for Miami, it may make a little more sense. Uh, five steals to zero for Auburn. That definitely makes sense. And then eight turnovers by Auburn to two for Miami. I don't know, just unforced errors. Uh, Miami's doing a good job of playing. I'll get to that in a takeaway, but Miami's doing a great job of playing uh, how our guards and wings dribble, uh, or how some of them don't dribble. Uh, eight fouls for Auburn, four for uh, Miami. And then zero fast break points across the board. Arbus had a chance to get a few, but they definitely uh, are shy and not pulling the trigger. Kessler 0-1, uh, four minutes. Uh, Smith 2 of 10, 17 minutes. Wait, 17 minutes? Holy shit! Uh, they need him out there all those 17 minutes. Uh, one and three for Flanagan, uh, 11 minutes. Jasper one and three, uh, 10 minutes. Katie 0 of three. It's not as bad as that would sound, but, you know, Jalen 4 or 5, just incredible offense. Uh, he's being used how he should be used. Oh, of uh, oh for D Dylan, get some great minutes. 2 or 2 for Cambridge, uh, playing how he needs to be playing. Um, 2 or 4 for Wendell, and I think his scoring uh, impact of the game is definitely a seed of that. Um, those are good takeaways. I got 12 here. Some of them might kind of mismatch because they're literally just me, as I've seen things, just putting them down. Some of them might be contradictory how the game played out later on in the half, but it's just literally me riffing down uh, some just notes, and I'm just going to read them off real quick, maybe a little bit of insight into why. So that's it. Uh, number one, our guards and attack mismatches. Auburn's did. No, hold on. Miami's is what I meant to say. Their, mis their mismatches usually were off the five variety. Uh, Dylan Carvel, they're on the three-point line. Um, Kessler, they're on the three-point line. Uh, I think Dylan did a great job moving his feet when guys started coming into the paint. Uh, they were trying to shoot. If you watched um, Creighton against whoever Creighton played, um, they had Ryan Hawkins basically allow those perimeter players to just shoot, which is like one of the worst strikes I've ever seen laid out once I was watching it. Um, that was seems to be out of necessity. I mean, that seems like more like it was a, it's a decision before the game, but at a certain point, I guess it's out of necessity. Uh, just keep Ryan Hawkins on the, Hawkins on the court. But um, Auburn... Uh, definitely that's a necessity to keep anybody on the court. A lot of times, off-ball movement would allow for, uh, I think his name is Sam, the, the, their center, you know, the, the white guy. They have, like, one white guy on the court, it's Sam. Uh, Sam, their five, their center, he um, found himself against guys that were not our centers very often uh, on offense, which is a little bit troubling to me at a certain point. But uh, this will go to another one of my uh, points here. But... So it'd be a lot of times they find Charlie Moore, I think his name is, or Isaiah Wong against the five, and they initially try to shoot out of that. Once they start trying to drive out of it, it was even less productive. Productive, it felt like. Um, 
I don't know, but they did. They got some really good um, drives against our big. So I think you just got to live with it at this point. Just hope they don't start making those threes. I'm sure they'll keep on getting out the looks that they could take, but it's all about if they do make them. Uh, and yeah, our guys just did not attack it. There's a lot of times where we had uh, a Zeb Jasper against somebody. He would just pass it out. He wouldn't look to drive. Uh, Windows, I think, attack a little bit more, but uh, our guards just have to be better at uh, getting past their bids. I mean, it's just that simple. Um, number two, guy, look for the early pass of your window in parentheses if you're going to play with space or pace, I meant. Uh, yeah, so if you want to get fast break points, you just got to you gotta just throw it out there sometimes. I mean, I'm not saying just airmail it, but um, there'd be a couple times where you'd have, you know, maybe a – and this, these aren't easy passes I'm trying to suggest here, but you'd have Carter with a step ahead of this guy, or you'd have Jabari – not Jabari, but Jalen a step ahead with his guy. Um, you just got to let it go sometimes. I mean, if you're really going to speed this game up and throw Miami out, the, out of their, uh, you know, rhythm on defense, you got to speed up quite a bit and make some shots. Um and the three pointers, the pull of three pointers have not been here. Like they kind of, kind of were last game. They they have not been here yet. Um, it's been a half court game for Auburn, and you know, shout out to Auburn for actually succeeding in that half court game. But uh, got to start throwing those passes a little bit more if you want to going to break this kind of uh, malaise. I think Auburn has been in pacing wise. Not much better versus traps off of screens. I guess I mean the only way I can say you it's been any better is that like you don't have it to where uh, where just throwing it around, you know getting ripped and stuff like that. I mean, it's happened a few times off of traps, but for the most part, um, I think mean, we've done an admirable job of not turning it over off of traps. Um, but as far as, like, finding a solution to those traps, I really don't think we've done that. It's just been trying to create a world where we just don't get trapped. That's pretty much been the M.O. down the stretch. Just, you know, maybe sometimes you just um, don't call a screen instead of calling a screen. Since that pretty much been the, the rhythm, uh, which is it's tough because it's a ball screen offense, like kind of like Alabama having a man come up on that screen is key, and that's just taking that out of our playbook has been tough. But they've tried their best to make that work to this point. And I respect the coaching staff for at least recognizing that it hasn't been the greatest, uh, greatest set for us to run uh, as of late. Uh, they forced your bar to stand more than he wanted. Yeah, I mean, you can watch that one pretty easily. Uh, this one possession where I think Jabari caught it uh, on the – facing this way, the, the left uh, corner at the two-point line. And I think he, like, took like, a subtle step back, basically on the three-point line, just, like, took a contested shot that got blocked to that effect. And just, I don't like the way Jabari tried to answer, the way they're defending him. Um, they're playing a lot of deny. They're trapping him off of picking and, pick and pops. Uh, I think that happened too much down the stretch, but they – Trapped him a few times early with the pick and pops. Uh, and they really, really, really are playing physical with him off ball. And he's responding that well sometimes, but they're using smaller guys on him. And those guys are kind of like going along playing the night. They're kind of like uh, like aiming low on the on the entry passes, which I, I mean, I would probably contend that uh, Auburn, they pass low on entry passes more often than not. Uh, sometimes they pass high when it comes to like Kessler, but they usually kind of do like a you know maybe a bounce pass, just kind of a just an out of your shooter, like a little bit low in your shooting pocket would go. Um, and I think that's a subtle thing Miami is looking for, You're looking for those steals. Uh, it's a little bit lower than Jabari like could reach um, before like a smaller guard would. And they have, he's a smaller guy on him every time. Like, he doesn't have the uh, six ten doing on him very often. It's pretty much been that six seven guy or a uh, or shorter. I forgot to do with the six seven guy, but. Uh, yeah, he's been fantastic uh, playing deny on him, as I think a lot of them have been. But I think Jabari just has to, like, catch that. What he's doing is that he's catching it off the pass, and they're playing him for the shot. If and a lot of times they're playing him on his back, too. So, like, he's catching it. They're right here. He's catching it here. As Rafty said, Rafty, I, I've never going to say his name. Bill Rafty said, you could, you know, take, get in triple threat and go from there, you know, ISO if you want to do like that, which... I probably would recommend because he's going to double off of that. But you could do that. And I think Rafty suggests a jab step. Boom, jab step, then just go. Um, and hope might come, but you can pass out of that. I trust your bars until, like, as far as passing out of a uh, – passing out of – with help coming, not with help already there, but with help coming, passing out of that. Um, he can adjust this. I mean, it's just they're really playing for the the uh, the, in, the deny and then for the three. Uh, we got to hurry this up a little bit. Miami fans got up. Yeah, early on in that game, Miami fans were crazy. I mean, you hear their boos. Uh, Auburn fans were radio silence until Wendell Green. I think it's Wendell Green. Uh, 
it's either Wendell or Jabari hustled for a steal and then got it to the other one. One of the two got it to the other one. And you heard the Auburn fans just explode at that point. And they've pretty much been in it since then. Uh, Auburn fans, you know, I've been to many Auburn events. They, you got to give them a reason to go crazy, you know. Um, and But they will when you do. But you got to give them a reason. Um, guys have lost from their matchup sometimes, especially the bigs. Yeah, so a lot of times, um, you know, but you can just tell when someone is not used to it's standing up on defense, and uh, our bigs are not used to standing up on defense, playing up on it. So there'd be some some backdoor cuts where just our center trying to find a guy in transition, um, and it'd be a backdoor cut or two like that. But sometimes the guards, you know, would have trouble too. I mean, there's a lot of Miami forced a lot of switching off ball that confused our guys quite a bit. There's a lot of recovering, a lot of helping, um, and thankfully we've gotten away with it without having to foul too much between Jabari, Dylan, and Jalen. But um, there's been a few. It looks like stupid fouls. It just happened because our guys just had to recover and rotate over and just, or you know, either lost because their man or lost because of somebody else's man. They had to try to help on, but got to do a better job of trying to figure out a way to both extend up and not allow the backdoor cuts. Um, Green did a good, did as good job as as putting pressure. Green did as good job as putting pressure on the rims. I'd like that. That's the window you like. He settled for like I think one bad three. Uh, but for the most part, I mean, once they figured out, you know, how to penetrate a little bit, um, and made their guys kind of respect our, uh, really Jalen, but maybe some couple of other wings a little bit, um, and lanes became open, uh, window did a fantastic job putting person around, uh, some very creative pass and very creative finishes, got one bad, um, uh, push off, it's in the arm, that would have been a pass to open Katie Johnson, who knows if he made it or not, but, uh, Winners did a great job of putting pressure on the rim, I think so. Uh, and he's showing you why you need – there's nobody else that can approximate what Wendell brings as far as p- passive creativity and uh, ability to both score and pass while driving. Um, it's just nobody on our team has that, that same capability. Uh, Jabbar's defensive in- instincts are too underrated. Yeah, I mean, people uh, people might look at that dunk and think, oh, my God, Jabbar got killed. Uh, but Jabbar's rotations – uh, his help has come a second too late multiple times, but his rotations, um, his ability to recover after being beaten, except for that dunk. But, um, I mean, he's had a fantastic defensive game. I mean, this is why I say, like, him and Boncaro, you'll see, like, some games where Boncaro just does not give effort uh, on defense. If he's oh, giving effort, he's a great defender. You know, he can be, but he doesn't give effort all the time. Jabari always give eff- gives effort. He has great instincts. Um he uses his length well without fouling too often. Uh, his hands are great, still in the ball. He got a couple of tips in there, but he, I don't think he got any steals. I mean, the guy just has everything you can ask for in defense. I mean, he could be maybe a couple steps quicker if he's going to be a three, which some people think he should be, um, you know, playing some three minutes in the NBA. I don't know if he's there. I mean, I think you sometimes you can be the same frame and play differently. I don't think he has – Katie, it could be a three, and was a three for most of his career. Still plays three to this day a little bit. But – um I don't think Jabari has three uh, speed, to be quite honest with you, but uh, he moves very well for four and uh, can play with some five, too. Um, he's the long, long, longest person in the court, uh, multiple periods, uh, without Kessler or um, Dylan in this game. So he's doing a lot of different things right now, and I like it. Uh, Cardwell and Dylan use some limb, but they've done a majestic job of sliding their feet. Yeah, so, I mean, they got away with some stuff that could be called differently in the second half. There's been some games where it's been called a lot tighter than it was in the second half the first half in this tournament to this point. But um, if they keep allowing them to, you know, kind of rest their arm a little bit, which I think I talked about that a little bit earlier, they'll be fine defensively. Um, it's just all about what the, the refs allow. Because they definitely play with some body and got away with a little bit of body. Like you could easily have a situation where Jalen has three fouls, Dylan has two fouls, and this going to his halftime. Um, but they've got letting, letting gotten away with and with them letting it get away, um, they played a great job with all they – even, you know, in the absence of, like, them kind of maybe getting away with some suspect defense, um, hands-wise, upper body-wise, they've done a majestic job of sliding their feet for what they are. I mean, Dylan, Dylan's, like, 6'11", uh, defending, like, Isaiah Wongs. I mean, like, that, like that, that shouldn't work ever. I mean, he's done a great job, I think, doing that. They've done a great job of playing deny. Yeah, I already said this. But um, Miami did a great job of playing deny, interrupting passing lanes. And uh, preying on Auburn is uh, sometimes lackadaisical passing instincts. There's a lot of times where Auburn will just, like, throw a kind of floater out there with uh, with, the, with a defender playing the passing lanes. It happened very often against Florida, for example. But um, 
There's a lot of times where they were playing deny, and it just seemed like like we did not recognize that they were doing that. Uh, when the pass became a lot less lazy and a, a little bit more at least comprehensive that these guys are intending on denying the pass instead of just playing up on a guy uh, sometimes, it got a little bit better. But, um, yeah, Miami, they, they did a great job early on in, in getting those steals. And the last one, Green's phenomenal offense on the stretch. I think it's pretty obvious. I'm going to let this go right here. But uh, this, uh, this is the second half I think Auburn could win this pretty easily. It's just about uh, really making making their bigs work against Jalen, against Cardwell, or at least paying attention to Cardwell on those those drives, uh, and maybe making Kessler back to uh, part of this this game plan. I mean, he's been taken completely out of it, so hopefully they can figure out a way to use him. I also like Flanagan posting up a little bit. Flanagan, uh, yeah, one really good possession where he got under the rim, uh, looked bigger than a guy to fit in him, and uh, was really in there hustling for the rebound. I don't think he got it, but he was hustling for it. Um, so we'll see. But it's okay, I adapted anyway. Um, 30 seconds of silence. Uh, I didn't take any notes. I didn't need to take any notes. I didn't, I complained a lot. Uh, if I didn't have a job, maybe it's going to go a little bit differently than it's going to go. I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not going to be throwing shit around. I'm not going to do any of that. Uh, I, I, I'm, I don't know. I, my grandma, uh, I usually call it after these games, kind of give her, you know, just riff about body one way or the other, positive or negative. She went, she turned the game off, I think, with like eight minutes ago. After that, uh, the, the, I think it was a miss, I think it was a miss layup. They go back down the other end. It's a block by Jabari. They go back down. It's that cluster fuck possession that ends up with them going back down, and then KD blocks it pretty much one on one. And they go back down and they have another clusterfuck possession. And they go back down and get another three. I think that was pretty much the last time she watched. That was probably the end of the game. I mean, you probably could turn off at that point and not miss a single thing. Um, that reminded me a lot of some of those uh, Gus Malzahn ass kickings where you'd be like, you know, a top 10 team or so. And like, <laughs> you probably shouldn't be where you're at. Based on how you've been performing recently, but you know you got some of the metrics there, some of the the pieces that I think you posted where you at. And this isn't me saying like revisionist history. Like, I think Auburn was a two seed for the majority of the two seed or better for the majority of the season. I mean they just you got the the record, you got the quad wins, you got the the analytics. I mean LSU told you is a top ten team. That's about top two seed. I mean you could maybe contend they should have been lower than Tennessee. I don't. I mean, if you said that, I wouldn't mind. I mean, I never really don't give a shit about it at that point. But the point being, this is a top ten ish team for the literally almost the entire season, um, and they just. I mean, after January, they just never had a an adjustment to certain schematic things. Uh, number one biggest thing that goes goes into that. Bruce Pearl got destroyed in this game. I mean, just utterly, massively smacked up. There's no other way around. I'm not calling for Bruce Pearl to be fired. I'm not saying it shouldn't be an NP or NCOTY. I'm not saying any of that shit shouldn't still be at the table. But he did get devastated in this game totally, completely. And this is a guy that I would say pretty much figured out the pack line defense uh, against Virginia for the most part. I mean, it was a sluggish first half, but pretty much figured that out. Um, you know, beat up Coach K. I mean, not Coach K, but uh, Roy. uh just destroyed Bill Self with a similar situation as this. I was telling another guy of Auburn, like, this, uh, this is basically what that game was, a like Kansas-Auburn game three years ago. Kansas did not see the type of ball that Auburn was playing in the, uh, the SEC that year, uh, five out, pretty much like this Kansas game almost. Five out, slow, kind of kind of undersized guards that I will say, Kansas' guards are not undersized. Like, Kansas' guards, for their position, 
You get to the the, the four three, that's when you kind of get a little bit iffy. But they have so much defensive talent throughout, like that one through four, that it just doesn't matter. There, I mean, they are a lot similar to me to that Auburn team. Although I will say, like the big difference is like their point guards, like playing six foot. Jared Hart's probably like 5'10", but for the most part, 2-4, through four, pretty similar, I think, in some some ways. Um, it was just a mismatch, a style you don't see. Uh, the, the longest miss I can think of where Auburn played against the five-out offense was probably the Vanderbilt game, and that went kind of like this for the first three minutes, just no answer to their bigs being able to shoot. Um, and the second that big kind of started falling off and started playing more in the post, where Walker could come back to the rim. It was GG at that point. Plus, they just don't have the guard depth. What really broke the open was not just being five out because they're sitting to start hitting until, like, the game was pretty much done anyway. But um, the four guards, I mean, the four. if you can say, if you look at Auburn's entire, like, start to finish, like, their entire schedule, there was no situation in which I thought they didn't have enough defenders for the occasion. They didn't have enough defenders. They couldn't account for Wendell Green basically not having a matchup on the court. I thought he did fine in straight-up defense, but anytime it came navigating screens and stuff like that, and you had to really account for him, it wasn't great. It wasn't great one-on-one, but it wasn't, like, terrible. But really, when the guys really started moving around, that's when things just fucked up. I said it in the first half. I tried to sketch that together and get this out here by tonight. But dudes just could not move around. I mean, anytime you got to transition, you felt like dudes were losing their man. Um... Anytime you had a, a, a switch with the bigs uh, kind of coming up to the, the corners, uh, backdoor cut season uh, almost every time, their guards. Like, you had damn near a point guard type feel to me from all four of their guards. One's basically a three, but let's just, you know. Uh, you know, three, three are legitimately like guard guards. Um, it, it was just, it was ugly. I mean, it was a fucking buzz. So there's no other way around it. Uh, Jabari, his defensive intensity, I think, was still there in the second half, but it just, I think it, they were, um, it's like a water gets a damn situation, and rising, rising water, uh, it just sp- spilled over, I mean, they tried to account for, they tried to count too many things, they tried to account for having fives out there that was slow-footed centers, at least compared to, I mean, they did a good job, but I thought Carwell moved well in the first half, um, I thought Jalen moved well, I mean, he's more of a four, uh, I thought Jabari moved well, you know, relatively speaking, but there's only so much you can account for. All men's walk heads from the court pretty much like the ideal like schematic uh blueprint for um L- Lorianga. Uh L- Lorianga, whatever his name is. Noriega. Noriega pretty much cooked <laughs> Noriega pretty much cooked the entire staff every minute Kessel was on the court. Every day he drew up came to perfection. There might have been five or less plays where I felt like um Kessel's a positive on defense. And that's not me. It's not on him. It's on coaching. There's no reason why Bruce Pearl should have Kessler out there in extended minutes against a four guard lineup with a five inch stretch the floor. There's no one on the court for him. I'd say in the first half, they did a lot of a good job of getting Kessler matched up against a guard every time, just about uh, on defense. That should tell you, because it happened in the first half in the few minutes he played, but that should tell you early in the second half when it was still fairly close. You could not have this guy on the court. He is unplayable. You see that shit in the NBA every time, and coaches adjust. There's got to be something in your brain as an elite coach, even on the college level, to say, I can't have this dude out there in a five-guard lineup, especially because I give you shit on offense. The only way the only way you can make that work is if you have a guy that makes them pay at that five spot. What happened with AD against the Houston Rockets, for example, uh, in the bubble, was that he was just draining shots. He was a physical monster they didn't have any matchup for and they could not beat them. They didn't have the team talent anyway, but they could not make him pay for that. It also went a little bit differently against the Miami game when Kelly Olynyk was a little bit better uh, at shooting and just overall you know, playing the game of basketball. They kind of made it work a little bit differently. But the point being, um, you could not have a guy that just can't defend anybody on the court. On NBA, that's been known for like three years. Just Golden State Warriors really made that known. You could not have a guy that cannot defend anybody on the court especially if he can't trigger an offense. I thought Kessler just, it was just like any Kessler game where, um, you know, sometimes he doesn't get the post touches he needed, but, I mean, him on the rim, dude, even when he got the ones they wanted to give him, he was fucking terrible. I mean, that's not me insulting Kessler at all, but that was just god-awful play. I mean, from front to back, uh, going up soft, uh, 
bring the ball down too long, getting ripped, even your rebounds. I mean, it was just, I got to respond to my grandma real quick. I'm back. Uh, <laughs> I had to test my grandma real quick. Uh, but I don't know what I was talking about. Kessler? Yeah, uh, Kessler. I mean, that's what she was saying to me about. It was like She doesn't think Kessler should go. I also think Kessler should go. I think Jabari should go, obviously. Um, th- here's the thing. A lot of college fans look at like the way, like the recency bias of things, like how did the guys play the last time out. Kessler is still a top 25 pick. Will this game maybe change some of the decisions of how, how they view him versus um, – I don't know, Mark Williams, somebody like that. I don't know. But um you just have more you got more tape on him. That that changes the decision a little bit. We haven't seen him in again a five situation. Would he look different about it with, with better guards out there? Maybe, maybe so. I mean, it's possible. I mean the problem is that Auburn's defense was contingent on him um uh basically being a block, a fortress, a blockade. Um and I mean, I guess a five out team. That's basically you doing from the start. Like that's it's, it's, you, if you if you depend on your center to be a rim protector, and ain't nobody in the rim, ain't nobody in the paint. Can be a bad spot, I think. Um, uh, and we was in a bad spot from pretty pretty early on to to the very end. Um, I guess we can kind of cover a couple other guys. Um, now I'm auto focused. You know my. Uh, yeah, my grandma, we, we love testing at these games, so I got I to gotta hit it up. I'm just going to keep on going through it. I'll just cut out the bad parts. But, uh, yeah, uh, just going down to uh, review on Is up Jasper. I mean, that's pretty much how, what I thought out of him. That's what I was telling people. Like, if you don't have a guy that – well, if you are a lead guard that can't put pressure on the rim, you're not a lead guard. Jeff had one possession where he got the ball. Uh, some big thing got the rebound and passed it out to him. And then he got the ball – and was like two feet on the rim, you know, pretty much try to draw some some um, some uh, contact or have a tough finish situation. And then he passes it out to the corner where there's nobody there. I mean, there's a guy that was there that was not there then. As a lead guard, you have to have scoring instincts. You just have to be. There is no such thing as a facilitator that cannot put pressure on the rim. I mean... If you have a precision offense where you guys just has supernatural vision, maybe one thing, but there's never been a good lead or a stellar lead guard that can't put pressure on the rim. He just does a lot of, you know, side-to-side dribbling. He, he's safe. He doesn't take any crazy passes. But the thing is, if you don't take any uh, risk, you don't do anything on, on the NBA. Not NBA, but uh, basketball. You don't do that in college basketball either. You cannot be unable to, like, he doesn't want to pick. He does run pick and rolls. Like he does, he just doesn't. He doesn't run any pick and rolls. This is a ball screen offense where everything's predicated around the one five screen, and he can't run pick and rolls. That's not a lead guard. And the problem is, you have a starting five where he is essentially the lead guard. Now, if they ran more sets to get the guys that are not, you know, that that need the body pass to them open, that'd be okay. But they don't run that many sets for the fours, the fives in this team. So you get to a point where you have to have Katie Johnson, who's on a passer, which is fine sometimes. But you have a guy that's not a passer that pretty much his main opportunity or his main value, like it's really what is told to him by the coaching staff to get your own shot. So something that looks awful. But that's what he's presented as. That's what his job is to do. I don't blame Katie when he has these like stretches of like just four straight like bad shots because that's what he's asked to do. How can you limit that? I, that's on the coaching staff. But I think one way to help that would be having a lead guard on the, the uh, court at all times. You don't have you only have one lead guard on the team. You need to have some more Flanagan from last year when in the uh the non Sharif Cooper minutes where he was kind of a point guard, kind of he wasn't great in that role, but he was decent. I mean, positionally wise he was good, but he was decent overall, I would say. You needed that, uh pretty much in the uh the non window minutes and you didn't get that for most of this year. Uh you don't have like I say, you don't have a a point guard facilitator out of Zep. Uh, so, in a bad spot right there. You, Wendell pretty much has to like, be the offensive card for this team. Every man's on the court. Every man's on the court. He's pretty much a lead call. You could have it to where you run sets for Jabari, for Jalen, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not going to excuse the fact that like our guards like are not able to do like lead entries overall. I, I don't think that um, like a lead pass when you throw up the court and transition, 
I, Wendell's might have thrown that like less than twenty times the whole season. You just there's too there's too many spots. There's too many spots on the court. I'm just, I, my grandma, she's like you know a little bit older, of course, you know, and uh, I know I'm trying to like understand for her like these moments are like all matter a lot more because you don't know how many times you'll see like this team perform. Um, but I really do think it's like it's a long term game. Do you have Zeps coming back? You have Wendell coming back. You have Flanagan potentially coming back. Katie, uh, Jane Williams, uh, you know uh, Cardwell. I mean, you got a core there to build off of. I think that you'll probably see uh, Chance Westry starting by the midseason, honestly. I think you need more point guard instincts on the court. Maybe not necessarily point guards, but you need more instincts on the court like that. I, you just can't You can't run back Zepp, Katie, and Flanagan. I think Flanagan will be great after some uh, rehabilitation and fine-tuning on some of his shortcomings this season. Um, he's just not 100% like mentally, I think. You know, he needs to kind of get the feel for chemistry and stuff like that. Um, this is Wendell's first season on a real-level basketball. I mean, that level is fine, but that's not even like none of that matters in this. And he probably faced maybe like two traps all, all his freshman season. This this is his first season pretty much playing real basketball that we care to discuss about. And I think once he gets to see how guys are defending him and make adjustments, he'll be fine. Uh, I think he'll probably – remain a dynamo off the bench, which is how I would have him. But he can definitely be kind of close to where he was the first half of the season. It's just you got to develop. I mean, he was good most of, the season, uh, most of this game on offense. It's just the defense. But that's going to come. I mean, that's just how it's going to be. I mean, Jared Harper's a turnstile, too, his first season. you got to just find ways to resist on defense as a short guard. And, you know, they pretty much been running the fly as far as that goes. New look center, new look four. Allen Flanagan comes back late. New look to, and then Wendell himself is new to the game. I mean, it's just, there's no one to really be that continuity in the starting lineup. And, um, you know, that's what happens when you have that. Um, I would think, you know, I'm just riffing at this point. I would think if you say this time next March, uh, I would probably consume you'd have something like, I can't see both Zep and Katie being benched. I would think you keep... I don't, I don't, I don't know. Zep, maybe I would think Zep probably. Um, maybe Zep, Flanagan, Westry, um, Jalen, insert transfer four or Triori at the five. Uh, tri- Triori, I don't know, it's French. Uh, Johan Triori, I'm pretty sure he'll commit to us, um, which raises my expectations of next year considerably because they are not going to keep Kessler. I don't think Kessler's going to be here again that season. Um, I think he'll be like 17th, 16th pick. I, I would take that every time. Um, I mean, that's continuity, though. Like, Westry, Triori, if you get Jalen back, you know, that's continuity. You just need to have pieces there that are defensive Star Wars that plug in on the defense. And unfortunately, you know, we didn't have that here with the starting lineup until I think Flanagan. I think there's an entirely different season Flanagan plays that first half of the season. I think it's wholly different, to be honest with you. I don't know how it goes as far as like trying to get Jabari his touches, how to get Kessler his touches, blah, blah, blah. But I think it's a wholly different season for everybody involved if he's playing. I really do. Um, now, I didn't even go down the whole roster. I think Carl would do a fantastic when his limit and his limited minutes. I mean, he pretty much got none in the second half. I felt like uh, he did a lot of Jabari, uh, Jalen together, which I wanted to close the game out. Uh, but they did a lot of Kessler, which I didn't understand. I mean, I get the rationale that Kessler can do more potentially on the court than Cardwell, but at a certain point, you got to look at what's happening on that court. Cardwell played better than Kessler. That's just in the point. He moved better. He's smaller. He's a little bit quicker. He's more athletic than Kessler. Um, he just played better. I mean, he's a better metric in that in that situation. I think that's on Bruce Pearl. Um, J- uh, Jalen, I, I don't think he got the same level of shots like I said in the second half, but he was fine. Uh, even then, he was still the best matchup they have for that that situation. So, like move his feet well, still in the second half. Just had to figure out a better way to use him, and uh, they did not. They wait way too long to put him in the first place. I mean, he was pretty much getting down like ten points before they put him in. Uh, after I think it was Miller just kept on like just. Like a LeBron, uh, spin the ball back to yourself, uh, the fuck you, uh, the shot attempt. Uh, cause it wasn't three, it would just be like long mid ranges, and Kessler could come out there. And it's just like watching like Rick Ball, dude. 
It's like if you got one guy that's way better than another dude and way quicker than another dude, no matter if it's bigger or smaller, Tesla cannot come out there and meet that dude up out there. It would have been food every time, it would have been easy layups every time. So he had to do what he did, and he got killed doing what he did. Easy mid ranges. And you could do. I mean, that was it. There's nothing else. There's literally nothing else you could have done in a situation. Um, she shouldn't have him on the court. Um, Cambridge took one three. I was like, yeah, but I thought he was fine the second half. I mean, he just he was uh, another matchup. I mean, you had, I think you had at one point like him, Katie, and then I think uh, Wendell or something like that. No, no, Katie. I think and Zepp and him. Try to put more defense on the court. I get that. You probably should try it a little bit earlier, but you know whatever. Uh, it's tough because. I think he took him off the court after the missed three because he just was offensively like a non-factor. That's kind of how he is. He's not putting pressure on the rim, trying to get rebounds, but I, it's tough. I mean, it is tough, but, you know, I, I think he did what he could. He needed more defense, and he is a bigger body that could, you know, kind of match up with their four, so I, I get it. Um, I'm just riffing at this point. It was, it was a bad season, uh, ending taste. I mean, it's like it's like you have like a, uh, your best player like break his leg at some of the end of the game and you lose the game anyway. This felt like that, but like nobody broke the leg. It was just a breaking of the heart, really. Because um, I mean, Jabari is gonna probably be like your best, your most talented player you ever seen come through, just in terms of raw talent, not like anything else, just raw talent. Um, and you got, I mean, he went out. He had the type of performance that boosts every scout's worst case scenario of him. Because everybody thinks it's Rashard Lewis, where he just pretty much as a, uh, you know, he can do a little bit of post up, but he's pretty much just a 3 and D guy that catches at the wing, catches up the post, whatever, and just puts it up there, just shoots. And that's what it looked like today, which is a guy that was only comfortable catching and shooting. And that's the worst case scenario for Jabari. That's, that's probably better still Rashard Lewis with just the way he can um, defend. On the perimeter. Well, I mean, Rashard Lewis was nice in his prime, but like, the point being, better Rashard Lewis is not what anybody wants at Jabari Smith. But that type of game, dude, unfortunately, it's the last, the last, what we got out of him was just that. I mean, that, that's not even like what he looked like in the game before that. And it's going to be like, like, I autofocus out again. <laughs> no. <laughs> I had to go back to autofocus to get this thing going. Um, I'm just hurting jerky at this point. I'm going to end this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it. It's just, I got to cut this down. There's so much cutting and stops going to happen because me test, trying to test deep would be me disappointing me collecting my thoughts, all that stuff. Um, it was bad. It was bad. It was a bad game. Uh, I don't think it subtracts from what was a good season. I just don't think that Auburn had an adjustment. You know, they had ball screen offense, and that's all they had. And once the ball screen part of it got taken out, it never looked clean again. Outside of last week, I don't think this offense looked consistently good since people realized they could start trapping the, the ball handler. I And our barns just got exposed. I mean, our guys are not at the caliber of decision-maker that you need as lead guards. You can't have multiple guys that are not great decision-makers. That's just not nah, – it can't happen. And that's what happened multiple times to close to get a season out. I, I said last night that if uh, Auburn's bigs on Tennessee and Tennessee's guards were here – uh, and you just kind of fuse those two situations, cut out the, the, the fat, so to speak. Uh, you'd have a fucking supreme team. Like, was Zakai Ziegler, Kennedy Chandler's, uh, Viscovi with, uh, with Walker Kessler and Jabari? <sighs> Good grief. Um, but yeah, it's, it's funny because, like, 2019 was predicated on our guards. Um, even 2021, the, uh, the COVID year, I mean, I thought we had good guard play, um, considerably, especially the fact in the fact that, like, we just didn't have, any spirits between the roster, um, at least the new guys, the old guys, but never got all the guys together at one point, unfortunately. But uh, this was, this is what happened. You have too much. You had too much expectations. This was, I don't think the guard was, the guard core was the guard core of the one seed. And unfortunately, I think that uh, dragged us down to where we end up being at. But uh, I think it'll get better. I really do. I mean, this is a two, three year core here. I mean, guys here, pretty much most guys are going to be here again in 2024, much less 2023. So it's just a long game. You got to get the town, got to retool the roster in a couple spots, but I think it'll be fine. Uh, you know, War Eagle, all that stuff. Uh, I'm disappointed, uh, but I mean, you still have the best season on the SEC teams of Arkansas. Arkansas, they just don't die, do they, huh? Uh, 